1948, it was here in Tel Aviv that the state of Israel came to be. Many wars later, tensions and conflict still persist between Israel and its neighbors. Now, is it possible to imagine two nations, Israel and Palestine, living peacefully side by side, respecting their borders? That's where we are right now. Yes, it is possible to imagine that, but first, politicians from both sides have to agree to a deal. And that again, that is not easy. In Israel and the Palestinian territories, we met many young artists and activists who believe change is on the way. But in the minds of many, creating peace starts at the top. So we decided to include the opinions of two prominent politicians, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, whom I interviewed last year in New York City, and Palestinian leader, scholar, and legislator Hanan Ashrawi. I spoke with her at the PLO offices in Ramallah, here they are in their own words. Dr. Ostrovi, thanks so much for talking to us. My pleasure. Prime Minister, thanks so much for talking to us. That's my pleasure. As journalists, it's always very complicated to try to cover this story because we always get two different versions of the same event. For instance, uh, in the last uh, war in Gaza, Israel said that they attacked Palestinians in self-defense. And in an interview, you insisted that it was a deliberate massacre. So how do we know the truth? Well, actually, you can know the truth by just looking at the facts. I mean, Israel was targeted by these terrorists, by these Hamas terrorists. They were firing thousands of rockets into Israel's cities. When you use airplanes and bombs and uh, artillery and shells and so on, and when you destroy whole residential neighborhoods, then uh, you claim that this is self-defense. What did these innocent civilians do? Uh, the Palestinian president, Mahmoud Abbas, accused Israel of committing war crimes and genocide in Gaza. Did you take that as a personal attack? I take it as absurd. I can imagine what would happen if, in any country, you had thousands of rockets so falling on New York, falling on Washington, fall, falling on uh, uh, Los Angeles, Miami, you name it. Uh, and not only were they firing rockets at civilians, they were hiding behind their own civilians, using their children, their civilians as human shields. All the investigations we have seen describe what happened in Gaza as a horrific massacre, as targeting civilians, as destroying whole families and neighborhoods, destroying infrastructure. If these are not war crimes, what are war crimes? We try to minimize, to avoid any civilian casualties. But when Hamas is firing from schools, homes, uh, UN installations, hospitals, firing, storing rockets, firing rockets at our civilians, uh, of course we have to take action to prevent them from doing so. Anybody would. Uh, Israel destroys our homes, demolishes homes. Israel uh, steals the land. Israel builds apartheid walls. Israel builds more settlements. Israel annexes Jerusalem and other Palestinian areas and then denies us all our rights. Huh? And we are supposed to negotiate. The no Israeli government would offer a border before they knew what's beyond the border. Is there a state there, a Palestinian state, that is uh, like Syria? Uh, that is like uh, uh, Gaza, or is it a peaceful state? This is a situation of occupier and occupied. A military occupation that enjoys total blind support from the US, from the strongest uh, uh, country in the world, and that has gotten used to getting a free pass. We are the only people on Earth who are being asked to ask the permission of our occupier to be free. You say that you have a very good relationship with President Barack Obama, but just a few hours after you left the White House, they criticized you fiercely. They said that uh, your project for more settlements in the West Bank would draw international condemnation. Yeah, well, this isn't a settlement. This is a, maybe they should be aware, of, they're not aware of the facts. Jews buy apartments in Arab neighborhoods, Arabs buy apartments in Jewish neighborhoods. I wouldn't dream of interfering with that. At uh, the UN, you said that Hamas is ISIS and ISIS is Hamas. Uh, I didn't say that uh, Hamas and ISIS are twins. I said that they're brothers. They're branches, uh, as I said in the UN, of the same poison trees of militant Islam. This is ridiculous. I think, I mean, we, uh, Hamas is our political opposition, but it has nothing to do with ISIS, and it has no language in common with ISIS. And this is another way of really spinning something in order to disguise and label and, and mislead people. See this? This impending execution of this victim? This isn't ISIS. This is Hamas. During the recent fighting, right at the time when they were doing the beheadings, 
Hamas took out dozens of Palestinians, Palestinians in Gaza, and executed them. He says that ISIS beheads people and Hamas puts a bullet in the back of their heads. That's what he told me. The bullets that we have seen have been Israeli military bullets. And I don't think just finding uh, a scapegoat and putting all the faults on Hamas uh, exonerates Israel from its full responsibility as a military occupation. Now, Hamas is one constituent of a large uh, political, pluralistic reality in Palestine. We may disagree with their agenda, and we do. But it doesn't mean that they have no right to express themselves or to differ, provided they do it peacefully and in accordance with the law. I listened to your speech at the UN, and it was hopeless. In other words, you didn't offer any hint whatsoever of a possible negotiation with the Palestinians. No, on the contrary. I think that we should have two nation states, one for the Jewish people, one for the Palestinian people, with mutual recognition, which we're prepared to do. Mm. You believe yeah. him? No. No, I don't, because once you go beyond the slogan and the rhetoric, uh, you see that he has designed the Palestinian state, nation state, to suit his own purposes. During the height of Israel's 2015 election, the prime minister stunned everyone when he told his supporters he would not allow the creation of a Palestinian state. Days later, he clarified, saying he still favors the concept of a two-state solution but he can't support one right now. So if you really want peace, why can't you just sit down with the Palestinian president? You can. Would you, yeah. would you do it? Yeah, I would, I would have uh, and did. But I think what we want to make sure is that we sit down with somebody who's committed to live in peace with us. We have been committed. Unfortunately, it's Israel that hasn't reciprocated. Israel thinks that it can maintain the occupation and it can maintain power politics and just sit and talk forever. We've been talking since 1991. You wouldn't sit down with uh, somebody who made a unity pact with ISIS or with ISIL. You just wouldn't do it. Uh, and I think, I think we, I think Israel is maligned. Um, often and not understood. They have no credibility because they have no relationship to reality. It's not talks that we need to buy Israel more time to destroy the two-state solution. It's a clear commitment to international law, a plan of action to end the occupation and to have an independent sovereign Palestinian state on 67 borders. I think what we have to do is discuss everything together, border, territory, security, mutual recognition, Peace is a total package. Coming up, could a soccer ball be strong enough to break barriers between the next generation of Israelis and Palestinians? See how one organization is taking it to the field. That's next. <laughs>